Hey guys, I'm Emerald here at Lumber Capital Log Yard and I want to show you around our family business today. Let's begin. In a world where source and quality has become less of a priority, our mission here is to provide our community with economically friendly, high quality products. And so we're mainly a hemlock mill, so one of the first things you're probably going to notice when you pull in is our hemlock inventory. And of course, all of the logs have been particularly sourced. Either my dad actually harvested them or we sourced them from loggers who care about the forest. So it's not the product of any careless logging. If you keep up with the channel, then you'll know that any of the lumber you find around here was milled by my sister and I. And that is something that makes our business a little bit different is that it was actually milled right here, actually just over there. So not only is it retail, but we also produce a product in the same spot. So I want to get to show you guys the whole log yard here. So let's keep moving, but ta-da. Our hemlock inventory. Let's move on. We don't just do lumber though. We do firewood and basically anything that has to do with wood. This is all part of our zero waste strategy. As long as we can use every part of the tree, that's what makes us really happy. So that means that we offer many products. This is usually our camp firewood. It, I mean, you see that there's not much here right now people are out camping so we sold a lot of it um, but that's kind of a mess we can just ignore that this is our sawdust bin we sell this for animal bedding and I don't know people use it for blueberries because blueberries have to be really acidic which sawdust helps with this is just a way to get rid of a waste product and we sell it for pretty cheap people come in with shovels fill up like a trash can or even the back of a pickup bed and like I said use it for all kinds of stuff like animal bedding and stuff like that so there is our sawdust bin now we have firewood now firewood has to be probably the other large part of what we sell here you're looking at our 100% oak pile all of this you're gonna notice is barkless right now now obviously the product changes depending on you know where we're sourcing but all of this has been harvested from just a few mountains over and it was all heavily affected by the gypsy moths and so a lot of it was just dead just standing dead and so my dad harvested it and here now you can see it's firewood it's awesome firewood because it's sparkless it's dry perfect but this is our 100% oak pile we do have it a little separate our mixed pile which is a lot larger is way over there at the other end <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll take a look at that a little bit later let's move on turning around a little bit over here is where we actually just store a lot of the lumber that isn't being sold right away so you see we're stacking up our railroad ties over here and this is just a lot this is our loading space basically so you see there's a nice road that comes right off the main road here and truck and trailers can pull in and be easily loaded with the forks we have a lot of our orders that we set just right here so it's the easiest system we've come up with so far for loading people when that is needed ah this was actually all recently changed we had all the firewood actually over here so this is a change that I did show you uh, a couple months back when it happened but yeah here it is and it has been working out pretty good for us so over here is what we refer to as down below and it's where we store all of our logs before they're milled up and it's also where we pile up all of the slab wood now slab wood is always a constant problem for any mill you know or you don't know but you probably know right <laughs> it's an issue but we find ways to get rid of it we sell a lot of it people come in what if for all kinds of stuff you know whatever people can come up with it's really cheap so 
people just come and pile it on and do all kinds of stuff with it. But people get pretty creative. You'd be surprised. You know, some people just burn it. Other people build tree houses with it. All kinds of stuff. So right now it's pretty piled up. But well, we always find a way. And we always try not to waste it. So another thing that we have down here is our compost. Before spring hits, this pile is huge, but the season's pretty much over for it, so we only have a little bit left. In fact, we're gonna have to start piling it back up for next year. <sighs> Anyhow, that's pretty much all there is to see down here, so let's keep moving upwards. Everything is a loop, so you don't really have to back up unless you want to, but like, why would you want to, right? So we have it looped, so I mean, that prevents that is kind of a safety prevention if you really think about it. Backing up creates lots of problems, whether it's running over my dog or just not seeing a piece of equipment behind you, whatever it is, we have the whole log yard in a loop so you don't have to back up unless you have one of the roads closed off for some reason. So that's really nice. I tend to utilize that a lot. Over here is where we produce all of our firewood. Now we have several ways to cut and split firewood. We do have a firewood processor. We have a Bells 2000, and that's this blue machine over here. That machine does a lot more firewood than the Timberwolf splitter for sure. But a splitter and a processor, two different things, two completely different things. The processor only does these small poles. The fire, or the timber wolf, my, my, my bad. Um, the timber wolf splitter does these giant rounds that the processor could never do. I mean, just look at the size of this. It's like two feet in diameter. That's the kind of thing that we push through the timber wolf. And so you see why we need both. So we have several different dump trailers. This one is our medium sized one. It fits about one and a half cords into it. You just have to put the right trailer under the right conveyor, depending on you know what you're doing. Sometimes I can't take bigger trailers into certain places for deliveries because it just simply won't fit. So we have several different options for that. This is yet another splitter. It's the Easton made splitter. It's a lot different than the Timberwolf once again because it actually splits down and up instead of the other way. It's a lot different, but once again, not necessarily a high production splitter. The, t uh, the firewood processor definitely outdoes it by a lot. So you see this whole pile, this whole mess that we have going on here. This is all going to be firewood. Um, this is for the Easton made. This whole nice stacked pile you see over here, this is the kind of stuff that you can put through the processor. You see it's a lot smaller, um, not necessarily straight, but it, it's pole wood, right? So then another thing that you'll notice is we have uh, quite a few of these jigs filled with slab wood. Now, the reason why this slab wood isn't down below is because it's hardwood. It's not hemlock and pine, it's mainly oak. So this is all great for firewood. We're not wasting that even a little bit. It's going to make some awesome firewood. Once again, a lot is barkless, not all of it, but a lot. So this will be actually um, cut it's a lot of work, but you have to cut it all with a chainsaw to, you know, 16 inch increments, however long you want your, your firewood to be. And then you use the splitter. It's once again, not necessarily something that you could do on our processor, which is why once again, those splitters are just really handy for a lot different materials. Now, moving on from firewood right here in the middle of it all, we have the milling operation and so you see we have the live deck this is where we pile up some of the flitches we have my little shack which is where I spend all of my time and then over there at the other end where Jade swamps basically just pulls all the material off and does the other half of the work right so then the building that you see over here 
is the office. Nothing too special about the office. This was actually an original building back when there used to be a diner here. I uh, have a lot of people that stop in that remember when this was a diner and this is still the original building. No electricity up here. All we have is solar and the solar panels we have are just strong enough to give us lights in here, which we didn't have for many years, let me tell you. But um, yeah, so it's nothing too special, but at the same time, it's what we got. And it has been working out good for us for a good 15 years, and we're hoping it will work out for another 15. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm so glad that you all got to see the whole operation for what it is in its whole. I just think that not everyone knows everything we have going on here and I think it's a lot different than what other mills look like. Not that I've seen a lot of other mills. I'd like to get the opportunity to but they, they're not quite like ours. Ours is special. So before I uh, get a fat head I need to humble myself a little bit. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.